My name is I'm one of the nephrologists working in NBT, so I lead the CKD HIT team, um, and we've got some PPIs in, in the conference today who are quite involved in our HIT teams. Um, so we've been in um, um, uh, work for last year, and we had our launch um, of this HIT uh, sometime uh, last year around the HIT conference time. And we've been working on several projects over the last, um, I don't know why it's not coming up, you can see it. No, no, I can see it coming. Okay. So we've been working on several projects um, over the last year. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Um, and um, what I'll be doing is I'll be covering the first three projects in a bit more detail and I'll briefly touch on the last two projects um, towards the end. Um, as David was presenting earlier on this morning about the maturity model and how we evaluate um, the HIT teams, um, uh, our projects sort of cover um, the broad remit of the maturity model in terms of uh, service development, patient experience, um, research and training. Um, one of the key projects we've been working on is um, telephone clinic um, service for CKD patients. Um, and. Um, we provide sort of tertiary renal services for a wide um, geographical area um, covering uh, Wilshire, um, Somerset, <coughs> um, even up to Devon, North Somerset. Um, and a lot of our patients travel a long distance to come to, to Bristol or to one of the outreach clinics for a 15 to 20 minute consultation. Most of our consultation is um, more of symptom questioning, checking their blood test to look at the kidney function and checking for blood pressure. So we thought of an idea as to whether patients actually have to travel all this distance to, um, to see us and whether we could think about having a telephone clinic which would be uh, better for patients in terms of reducing carbon footprint given Bristol has been voted as a European uh, green capital. Um, so this idea originated from one of my colleagues, Charlie Thompson, about um, two years ago. Um, he's moved on to work in Newcastle. Uh, so this was his uh, original um, idea and we've been working with AHS and, and Clark um, to develop this um, over the uh, last um, 12 months. So how we went about doing this is we did a patient survey initially to get a feel of what patients would like us to offer. And when we did this uh, quick survey of patients coming into Bristol for our routine CKD follow-up and transplant patients, uh, transplant clinics, we found nearly two thirds of the patients actually liked the idea and, and they said they would actually take up the service if, if it was offered to them. So then we went on to do a one-off uh, pilot clinic to get some feedback on, um, and on how patients actually felt having been to a telephone consult. Uh, and we had some support from uh, HS and Anna's here who kindly uh, provided us with um, uh, uh, some support to do this evaluation. So we did this uh, pilot clinic for about 12 patients and we got some quite positive feedback uh, from the patients. I've given some quotes here uh, from some of the patients. Uh, um, the first patient, as you can see, it went very well. Actually, it was a lot easier than having to come to Southmead. Um, and a few patients have said when, when you feel, okay, there's no point actually coming all the way to Southmead to see a clinician. Um, and some patients actually felt there weren't any disadvantages to having a telephone consult compared to a face-to-face -face clinic especially if you're feeling all right and everything seems to be going okay. Um, and a lot of people felt easier not having to take time off work um, to come to a clinic, which is a half a day um, uh, a job for them compared to a telephone consult, which can be done over a 15, 20 minute period, even when they're at work or um, at home. So it does um, have some um, good patient experience and therefore we decided to take it forward. Um, one of the major barriers historically and even currently <laughs> for setting up such a service was um, um, the tariff for telephone consultation. A standard face-to-face -face, um, consult would um, attract a tariff of 130 pounds. Um, and historically, I think nationally, a uh, telephone consult um, would attract a tariff of only 26 pounds, uh, which is a huge financial disincentive for trust and therefore discouraged clinicians and acute trusts to develop such a service, which might be actually much more <coughs> Uh, patient friendly, um, especially if they are quite well and they are having long term um, conditions, having to have multiple visits to hospital. And so, what we have been doing over the last year is trying to negotiate with CCGs, and I believe there's some informal agreement at the moment that um, we, we would uh, be paid £100 for every telephone consult we do, and uh, we have 
uh, submitted a business case to the CCGs to formalize this. We are pitching it through the South Gloss CCG. And Jonathan Evans with a long-term conditions lead within South Gloss is quite involved. And we're hopeful we'll be able to get it through the Bristol and uh, uh, North Somerset and other CCGs um, in, in the region. Um, if this goes ahead and, and the CCGs have approved this, then we are hopeful that we should be able to pilot this within the next three months. And um, we are planning to do this through some quality improvement work with, again, um, HSN to try and develop an, um, an ideal uh, telephone clinic model that would work um, in, in the real world. Um, we thought we should, when we started looking into this um, service, we, we sort of did some literature review and found there are some examples of telephone clinics being done or used in other specialties, say for example heart failure, people with rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes, uh, but the evidence was quite mixed in terms of whether actually it worked in those settings, um, partly maybe it's just the nature of the disease that's been tried. Um, there's only one example of a telephone clinic model that's been done in um, Coventry, but um, they haven't actually formally evaluated to say actually it's, it works. Um, so we, we felt we should use this opportunity to um, undertake some research and, and evaluate this formally. And we submitted a bid to Clark um, back in November, December time, which was successful. And we're going to evaluate um, um, the service um, in terms of patient experience, clinician and GP experience, and reducing carbon footprint and overall sort of financial impact and savings to the NHS and, um, and, and to CCGs. Um, we're also looking into developing future uh, studies about doing some randomized clinical trial and, and expanding the service to nurse-led clinics if our initial model works out and is, is successful. The next one I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, patient transport thing. So this this is an entirely uh, this is a project entirely driven by our PPIs within the team. Um, and my contribution has been very little on that. I've been more of observing and overseeing this project. Um, um, our PPIs are Angela and William B. Um, they have been doing most of this work, and this was their idea. Um, most of our CKD and dialysis patients, because they have got multiple comorbidities, they are quite dependent on hospital transport um, to come to clinics and uh, for their dialysis uh, appointments, which is three times a week. Currently, the transport is commissioned through CCGs, um, and uh, we don't, as NBT or secondary care providers, we don't have any direct control over how that service is provided. Multiple surveys nationally and locally have shown that patients are totally dissatisfied with the patient transport provision. And there are a lot of concerns raised, but um, this is an ongoing battle um, and it hasn't been addressed. So um, having gone through this experience before our PPIs um, uh, thought of this idea using patients themselves, other patients and volunteers to, to ferry patients between and uh, to and fro from hospitals. The idea is this would be much more cheaper than current contract that's done through private companies and hopefully might be more patient friendly and might improve patient experience. And this work is currently sub supported directly by the BHP with some additional grants um, and we're going to pilot this for six months and if it's successful and um, the CCGs are quite keen to take this forward um, as a long term um, project. And there is a website which I've mentioned in my earlier slide if people um, need to look into this um, you can there are a lot of information on the website and um, Angela and William Bean are quite happy to be contacted um, for any further information on this. So the third thing we are working within MBT is on acute kidney injury so this has got uh, quite um, a high profile nationally at the moment and um, there is an NHS England program that's going on acute kidney injury and to try and improve and prevent manage, uh, sorry, to prevent acute kidney injury and improve management of acute kidney injury nationally. And it's, it's expected about one sixth of all hospital admissions ha have acute kidney injury, and nearly one fourth to one third of these episodes are preventable or avoidable. Um, so that's why it's got a huge national interest. Um, and I have come up with some guidelines back in 2013 to try and address this and improve management of AKI. So uh, we have now set up a regional AKI network um, uh, wherein we're going to link with um, other uh, acute trusts in the region, especially Bath, um, uh, Western and BRI, who are um, DGHS who sort of provide renal uh, we, so we cover, we provide renal services to these acute trusts. 
and uh, we're going to establish a regional network so that we have a consistent uh, care pathway for patients with AKI in the region. Uh, we have developed some guidelines around management of AKI um, and this is going to be adopted by other trusts as well uh, so that we've got a consistent management pathway of patients who have acute kidney injury. Um, part of the work we're doing is um, we're developing some e-alerts within the lab systems so based on uh, a blood test which you have had today or yesterday, uh, the system would flag um, to a clinician that there could be a possibility of acute kidney injury in this patient comparing the current test to a previous um, uh, blood test. And this would alert clinicians to the fact that patients could have had AKI and therefore that would initiate a sequence of care pathways that needs to be done to improve um, and identify these patients early and to improve their management. We're also working on some care bundles um, and to improve the management of AKI and currently there is a sequence around AKI for this year between 2015 and 2016 um, which relates to providing information to GPs on acute kidney injury uh, at the time of discharge. So these are the areas we're working in relation to acute kidney injury and we're hopeful we'll be able to set up this regional network and have a sort of a, a consistent management pathway for all patients in the region and a referral pathway into NBT from acute tests. We have linked with Avon GP Education and um, I do study days um, on CKD and acute kidney injury for GPs. We are exploring with uh, UWE at the moment to look into setting up some study days for nurses and other healthcare professionals on CKD and AKI. Um, so we are still exploring that in terms of um, how we can get some accreditation from UWE for these study days um, which are more um, relevant for CPD activities for nurses. Uh, finally, in addition to the research we are doing with Clark, um, we are developing some online um, patient support tool. Um, this is uh, a collaboration with a, an industry private um, company who have gained some grants from the Department of Health. Um, and this is basically developing an online psychological platform tool um, to influence patients' behavior, their understanding of CKD, and how we can improve their engagement and, and compliance with treatment. So this is going to be piloted or the, uh, uh, we're still in the early stages in terms of developing a research protocol and, and ethics approval. Once this is done, we we'll hopefully pilot this for six months to 12 months, and if this is proved um, effective, and then obviously we're going to roll it out in, in a big scale. So these are the work um, projects we are currently working on um, and uh, um, I'm thankful to all the teams here plus um, our collaborators especially Clark and AHSN and, and the BHP for supporting the work uh, we've been doing uh, over the last year. Thank you.